Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the TAPS Art Championships 2020 webinar. My name is John Skies. I'm the director of media at TAPS. I am joined today by Robert Huckerby, who is our uh, athletic director and director of compliance, by uh, Vina Williams, who is our fine arts director, and Brian Bunzelmeyer, who is the TAPS executive director. A few things about the session before we get started. Uh, it is being recorded. You will get an email uh, if you registered for this webinar after the fact that we'll have a link to view that recording when it's ready. We're also going to put a version of the recording on our YouTube page so anybody can go back and reference this material. Uh, if you need to share share that with anybody at your campus who wasn't couldn't be with us today, go ahead and do that. We're going to put the links on our website also in our Twitter accounts. Uh, if you have any questions as we go through, go ahead and use that question box that's in the GoToWebinar control panel that you'll see there. We're going to keep an eye on that box as we go and uh, try to answer those either as we go through the session or uh, at the end in the question and answer part. If you have any other questions uh, or don't get to them, you can send us an, e an email at info at taps .biz. Uh, With that, I'm going to hand it over to Brian. Appreciate all of you joining us this morning. This is our third webinar today. We've done speech and academics, and now we're to art. Again, this replaces the June, uh, January meetings uh, that we've had in the past in Waco. We hope that it makes it a little easier on you to be at your school to watch it either now or watch it virtually later. As we go forward, Vina's got a great presentation about the art championships. We do encourage you to ask your questions here. John said it already, info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz, B-I-Z. If you have additional questions uh, after the webinar is concluded, we're here to help to do what we can. Robert's here to answer any eligibility and compliance questions. He'll have a little bit to add here in a little bit. And as that goes, we're going to turn it over to Vina. Vina, the seminar is yours. Thanks. Uh, welcome, art teachers. We have about 30, 45 minutes to cover the TAPS art season this morning and to go over the most asked questions that you have. Um, the first thing I'd like to point out are the dates of the championship meet. Um, you are all used to having the art championship on a Monday and Tuesday, but this year um, robotics has now become a part of our academic art um, meet. And so robotics will be on Monday, followed by art on Tuesday and Wednesday. It will be at the convention center, but uh, just make note that we are shifting a day uh, later. Um, in order for us to get connected uh, this year, um, I need you to understand who to contact and how to communicate with our office. Um, like I said, I'm the Director of Fine Arts, and um, also speaking later today will be John, our Director of Media, who's got some cool ideas for, um, for us. He was the one that uh, managed the fall photo contest that uh, was a really awesome uh, experience for our students. Um, so the best way to reach us through, is through our contact link on the website um, or through a direct email to info at tax.biz. These email tickets are accessible by all our staff and guarantees you get the right person to respond to your inquiries. Also equally important for us is to know all of you. As much as I'd like to meet you all in person, we can't wait to March to find out who you are. So your school needs to designate a fine arts director who is our first point of contact from our office to your school and let us know all your art teachers, including those that teach 2D, 3D, as well as photography and short film. So all those assistant teachers will also need to be listed in our online systems, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Um, we do have an art committee that spends many hours throughout the year answering questions and helping our art teachers prepare for our events. Um, some of them have taken other new teachers under their wings and is help, helping them to um, mentor. So um, if you do have questions, go ahead and still send them to info at taps.biz and I'll try to field most of those. Um, but occasionally we will reach out to our committee um, for some uh, questions to assist. Our mission, TAPS, commits to building leadership, fellowship, fair play, and sportsmanship of students by providing wholesome competition for young men and women. About 120 of our membership schools come together to participate in our championship event, filling over 300 tables with amazing works of art. We're looking forward to another fantastic experience for you and your students this year. So where do I start? 
This is the number one question I get from new to TAPS art teachers. We'll go through this season together, but today's webinar will get you headed in the right direction and set you up for a successful season. We'll discuss where to get information, how to prepare yourself as a teacher, how to prepare your students, and the categories of participation. Um, we'll also talk about what we expect and what you can expect at the event. First, I'd like to talk about the three websites that we have that you need to be familiar with. The first one is taps.biz. Taps.biz is where all the information is shared. Um, we'll look at the main page, the fine arts page, and this art specific page today. Our home page has main links at the top, recent news on the side on the right, and if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see our calendar. Feel free to explore all those links, but today we're gonna to take a closer look at the fine arts link and the art specific links. So if we were to click on fine arts on the main menu, it's going to take us to a fine art overview page. On the fine arts page, there are three categories listed under art. Fall photo took place last semester, and short film there is just a quick link to get to the short film information without having to go through the art page but it is part of our spring art championship. Right now, let's take a look at the art link. Oh, actually before that, um, there is a chart of fine arts fees underneath there, as well as if you were to scroll down on the live website, you'd see archive results, honors, and certificates. So just be sure you, when you go to any of the web pages that you actually scroll down to see all the contents. All right, if we were to click on art, um, you will find um, important dates and deadlines, links to resources such as study materials for art history. On the right, you'll see our archives of our news blast emails and further down from there, you'll see our Twitter feed. Um, as results become available, they'll be added, um, as resources become available, they'll be added here uh, on, on the left there. The rules link on that red menu bar um, will take us to the bylaws. When you click the rules from this art page, if you just let it load for just a moment, the document will actually jump straight to the art rules. If you start scrolling because you're thinking, oh, I just need to get to the end, it's going to override the jump to feature and you'll end up having to scroll all the way through all the athletics and all the other fine arts before you get to the art section. So click on rules and just let it, just wait a minute and it'll take you straight to the art sections. The frequently asked questions will be updated as we receive questions throughout the season. So there may be questions there today and there may be new questions tomorrow. So just keep an eye on those. If you have a question, maybe check those facts um, before emailing and see if someone else has already asked that question. The championship link um, we'll have information on our location, the schedules, the required forms, and things that you need um, for logistical purposes for our championship meet. The honors link is where our results will be hosted, and the hotels link will send you to our hotels booking page. Um, this is a huge event, so be sure to book your uh, hotels early as we do have academics and speech and robotics going on at the same time. We'll talk more about preparation and meet logistics soon, but let's continue on with our other two websites. <clears throat> Rank One is a new website that you'll need to become familiar with this year. It's our new system for student eligibility and coach compliance. It's our, also our main way to contact you. So what is it? You're going to need to make sure that you are set up with Rank One with your athletic director or your fine arts director. Your faculty profile will need to be completed with scope compliance. If you're exempt from scope for attending the June convention, you still will need to complete the professional acknowledgement of rules. Students also need to have profiles established so that eligibility can be determined. Your students will be listed on an art roster for easy access to the eligibility list. The student registration and rank one may take just a, a short time for students to um, fill it out, for their parents to fill it out, 
And then other students may take longer. So because they're a transfer student or an international student, or they have some unique situation that will require more forms to be filled out. So I'm telling you now, do not wait to start this eligibility process. It involves parents logging in and completing the account profile with the students. So make sure that you are taking care of this right away. We do not want you to wait until it's the day before they need to be in the system. You need to go ahead and start that process now. Um, this is our main outlet for contacting you. So it's imperative that your contact information is up to date in rank one and your profile is established. We did have some questions this morning with rank one. And so I'm gonna ask Robert if he can just talk about rank one just a little bit more. Thank you, Vina. Good morning, everyone. Uh, there is an element of rank one uh, that involves um, a process where you complete all the appropriate paperwork and the, the student's profile changes from red to green. Red means something missing. Obviously, green is good to go. You may have students that have done nothing all year, uh, either in any of our other events or in athletics, and they may not have anything in rank one. If that's the case, then they will need to have, they'll need to be in rank one and their student profile will need to be completed by their parents, as Vina mentioned earlier. The other component that comes into play is physicals. Uh, if, if your students who are participating in art have been in any athletics already this year, uh, and they have been approved and been participating, then um, they should be green and all of that paperwork should be in order. If they haven't, uh, the question has come up, do they have to have a physical? And the answer for those students competing in art would be no. If all they're doing is art, academics, or speech, they do not have to complete that physical uh, component of rank one. So keep that in mind. I'll reiterate what Vina said regarding uh, any students that aren't in rank one or do not have that information completed, please get that done as soon as possible. Uh, it does take a few days to get all that done and processed. Uh, we can help you walk through that. Uh, reach out to our office, give us a call here at the office, or shoot us an email at info at and uh, we will help you walk through that process. Okay, Vina. Thanks, Robert. The um, third website I want to take you to is tapster.com. This is where we do our entry submission and our meet management. You'll still need to have your fine arts director set you up um, faculty access in Tapster. You'll still complete a roster in Tapster on the student link, but this year it's a lot simpler with a spreadsheet view where you can just highlight art and click the student names um, on the spreadsheet. Um, we will do all our entries here, so you'll create your entries and enter in your media and things like that. Um, and we will also manage the meet from, uh, from Tapster. So preparing yourself is important, not just preparing your students. Um, you need to be sure to put, uh, to check out the art coaches checklist and complete the tasks uh, listed on that checklist. Um, it'll be posted on our website. All right, so knowing the rules is the most important thing for preparation. Knowing the rules before your students create the artwork is even better. If you have students wanting to enter a drawing, be sure to read the rules with them so that they understand the parameters of the entry. So there are a couple different types of rules in the rule book. There are general rules, such as how many entries my student can enter or what makes my student eligible or what color and size mats for, are needed for all categories um, and things like that regarding as general overall things. And there are also rules for individual categories regarding specific media, surfaces, minimum and maximum size limits. It's best to print those category descriptions and use the information as a checklist to make sure each piece is in full compliance with the rules for that section. However, don't forget the overall general rules, such as mat size, which is listed in the general rules section and may not necessarily be restated in the category section. When putting your entry in Tapster, be sure to have, a little, have the title for the work as well as the media used for the final dimensions available. Um, it's best to make sure you're viewing your students' artwork and not just listening to what they tell you to enter. 
I'll do another um, presentation on actual completing entries in uh, Tapster uh, in, in a week or so. There is one thing that we need to remind all our people and it's to remember that all the work must be entirely conceptualized developed and created by the students. So that is in the rules, it's found in the bylaws, and we just need to make sure you understand what that statement means. Um, so for entries, part of the preparation is not to get behind or wait until the last minute to submit your entries. Um, with some of our entry categories happening prior to the meet, let's first take a look at those. Art history. Art history is taken at your school. You have between the dates of March 2nd and March 20th. Um, it's a pretty big window for you to gather your three students. I'm, I'm sorry, you have, you have academics on the brain. You can have unlimited students for art history. Um, but all your students from your school will need to take the test on the same day at the same time. Uh, study material link is on our website so you can order those tune in um, arts pieces and uh, instructions for the test day will also be posted on the website also pre-event is senior portfolio um, for seniors prelims are judged prior to the state event and the top 10 from each classification will advance to the state meet you'll your students will create a google slides presentation and convert it to a pdf and that file is loaded into Tapster. Um, it's best, we, some schools, uh, students do a PowerPoint, um, but we've found in the last couple of years that if they create a Google Slides and share the access with you as a teacher, if there's any issues, you have shared access with that student so that the original file can be uh, changed if necessarily easy, easier than if you have to wait for the file um, to get to you in person. Um, so it's important that you review each slide of each portfolio and make sure that each work is in compliance with the rules before uploading it. Um, each art piece should fit into a regular category of art. Senior so portfolios are due February 15th, so that date is coming up, and the judging will be completed around March 10th. Um, portfolios that advance to state may not take their art pieces and enter them in regular categories. However, the portfolios that do not advance to state may take their categories, um, take those entries and enter in regular categories as long as they fit the rule of requirements of completing them in the last two years and they did not previously place at a TAPS competition. Um, senior portfolio submission instructions will be posted on the website art page um, and so you can um, look at those instructions later. It gives the instructions for the notebook and stuff. Um, and then one statement is uh, we eliminated the use of public domain sources in 2018 um, but we did grandfather works done prior to 2018 for the senior portfolio category. Um, however, new works may not be you may not use public domain or even copyrighted images. Okay. Short film is also done prior to the state meet, and you will upload the URL link um, in Tapster. And you need to make sure the link is public and not password protected. Um, please review all your short films prior to registration. Be on the lookout for inappropriate content according to our bylaws and our content standards. Don't forget an introduction is needed. It must be included in the video um, link. It doesn't have to be a part of the film, but it does need to be included in the link to the video. So for example, in an animation, a student can do a quick intro as the first thing and then show his um, film, the opening credits and the opening scene of the animation. Or the students can embed the intro into the film, um, but as long as it's at the beginning. For example, in a documentary, the intro can be a part of the actual film. Those entries are also due February 15th, with the judging to be completed by March 25th. We do plan to show the top films at the state competition again this year. Um, short film submission instructions will also be posted on the short film website. Fina, real quick, 
We had a question. Um, when will portfolio instructions be posted? Um, Brian? <laughs> Sorry, we had a mic problem. One second. Our goal is to have all information posted by the end of this week. So close the business tomorrow. We hope to have the links up in whatever other uh, opportunities we have by tomorrow at end of business. That includes our short film. We had another question about short film entry procedures. That'll be uh, also tomorrow by the end of business. Okay. So the rest of the categories are ones that you bring to the event categories 1 through 14 such as drawing painting communication um computer rendered art printmaking, mixed media photography sculpture relief fashion textiles jewelry industrial design and pottery ceramics and plastic arts um, those entries are due march 16th now it's important that the criteria for these categories are followed be sure to read the rules carefully Remembering that there are some rules specific to the categories, but there's also some rules in the general section. It's also important to understand the full concept of what the rule is saying. For example, drawing black and white says dry media. What that also means is you should not have any wet media. So make sure you're understanding fully what the rules say. And if you have a question, you can always email info at tapstop.biz for clarification. The main holdup that we have at state registration is when artwork doesn't fit the category that it's registered in, or it's registered in a category and there's a slight something that is outside the parameters of the rules. So be sure that you are comparing each artwork specifically to each of the set of rules. We do have a few categories that take place at the event. Um, Senior portfolio finals, like I said, the top 10 portfolios from each classification will advance to the state meet and will be judged again for final rankings. We'll have a gallery show where attendees can see the judged entries and it's a great opportunity to see um, the students in their full uh, work up. There's also an opportunity for oral critiques. Um, we do try to get college professors or professional artists to give those oral critiques. However, sometimes the critiques are given by the high school teachers that are at the event to judge. On site still life drawing, um, those entries are due at the same time as the other categories on March 16th. However, we do allow substitutions on site if someone's unable to make the trip. Um, you cannot do ads, but you can do a substitution. Two hours is given for those students to draw what they see on a still life arrangement. TAPS provides the paper and we stamp it with a logo and a time. And so when we post the schedule, be sure to check out when your classification is scheduled um, because it is a specific time and there's only one block for your classification. On-site seek and sketch also takes place at the event. Um, these entries are also due at the same time as the others on March 16th. And again, we will allow substitution on site if someone's unable to make the trip. Um, this also is given two hours to draw, but it's what they see outside the convention center rather than what's put on a table. We again will provide the paper, which is stamped with the logo and a timestamp. Times are available for both days of the event, Tuesday and Wednesday, early on Wednesday. Um, and this year, we're not going to do a specific 30 minute window for paper pickup. You, they just need to pick it up sometime between the open times, noticing when the last pickup time is and the last um, drop off time. And this year, we have a new on site photography exhibition contest that John is going to take a moment and talk about. Thank you, Vina. Um, so this is new uh, competition that we're kind of trying out this year. We're going to make some tweaks and just kind of see how this works. Uh, if you look in the handout section of the Go to Webinar control panel, you're going to see a version of a document that we will hand to you when you register uh, at the meet. Basically, uh, the, the main points here, there are no fees for this contest. There's no points for this contest. Um, it's on-site only. Uh, we are going to give awards, and it is open to students and to faculty. So basically how it will work, 
Um, <clears throat> we're going to use social media services, Twitter and Instagram, for students to, uh, to post their work with a certain hashtag. Uh, it has to be posted during the window, during the time frame of the contest. Uh, then we will go through and look at those um, those hashtags, see see the images that are uh, that were made. Then we'll have judging. Then we'll announce uh, our awards. The reason we're doing it through social media, um, mainly ease of use. We don't have a computer lab um, available at the convention center for you guys to sit and um, submit images digitally, and we don't want to have to worry about laptops or anything. So basically, you can use whatever cameras, whatever equipment you have. Um, and we're going to submit those through social media and judge those. Uh, if you have any other questions, um, you can ask them as we go, um, or uh, you can send an, an email to info at taps.biz. Again, it's kind of a pilot thing. Um, we'll see how this works. Uh, but also, thank you to everybody who, contri or who participated in the fall photo contest this year. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had a great time judging those images, and we're very proud of the work that was produced there. Um, if you have, and, and again, any questions, uh, just let us know. Thank you, Vina. Thanks, John. I'm sure this is going to be a great hit. I mean, I think we had, what, was it 800 photos in fall photo? That was really awesome. Um, one question that we have had um, regarding the fall photo contest is, can we enter those photos into the spring art championship? And the answer is yes. So even if your students placed at the fall photo contest, they may use those photos again for the spring championship. You cannot use photos that have placed previously in a TAPS championship spring event again in the spring event, but the fall photo from this year, you may um, enter um, in the spring. Um, let's talk okay. about documentation. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, um, I, I should have done this at the end, but I saw one question real quick. On-site photography, is it limited to three students like the other events? No, this is open to all of your students who are attending, who are registered for the contest, uh, and it's open to all the teachers um, and helpers that you're coming registered with your school. Good deal. Muted oh. me. Okay, documentation. Details for documentation are found on the TAPS bylaws with examples given in the notebook instructions. Okay, don't freak out art teachers, but this year I'm going to try to eliminate some of the prep work for you. We will not be collecting artwork information forms that have been used in recent years. Let me say that again. No artwork information forms. By submitting your student and teacher acknowledgement of rules and by registering your art pieces, you are certifying that the artwork submitted is in compliance with the rules. Okay, we still will collect a notebook, we still will have an inventory list, and we still are requiring source references um, for your artwork. Um, in the past, the source info must be attached to the back of the artwork and also included in the notebook. Um, so this year you can include it in your notebook to have a backup copy, but it will be required that the source information be attached to the back of the artwork and for 3D works included um, just with your artwork and uh, with the label that's next to your artwork. Okay, so what does that mean, uh, source work, source references? Um, a drawing, for example, may be done from imagination or real life observation or from the student's personally taken photo. If a student wants to draw a lion, they can either think about it for a long time and draw it from their imagination, not using any images, or they can go to the zoo and draw it in real life, or they can go to the zoo and take a photo and draw it from that photo. That student taken photo must, the photo, first of all, must be taken by the student that's entering the artwork, not someone else. And um, that photo needs to be attached to the back of the artwork. If drawing in real life, in the past, I've seen some that have, taking a selfie with them and their item in the background um, to show that they're drawing in real life or someone has taken a picture of them actually drawing in real life. Um, and then some students have also included photos of the work in progress. Another example of documentation is process shots. For some categories, process shots are required to show the creative process. For example, in the fashion design category, you would include photos of the student creating the work of art as it 
progresses through time. So the process shots would be maybe this, the, the first day that they started working on it, and then maybe halfway through the project, three quarters of the way through the project, and then the finished product. And so those process shots we're talking about are uh, photos of the actual process. Um, if you're doing a computer generated art piece, it would be um, the saved screenshots of the uh, time lapse of how the piece has been created. The judges look for these processes and they love to see the amount of work the students took to complete their work. So some of you may be thinking this is a lot of work and a lot of hassle, but don't take this step lightly as it really does help the judges with their decision making. So at registration and load in, be prepared to verify what media you use, that it matches the category description, that the student taken photos and the process shots documentation are all attached, and you've conformed to the size limits and the mat requirements that are met for each of the work. At the championships, which will be held at the Waco Convention Center again, um, be sure to book your hotels through the hotel link um, on the website. Um, but let's talk about the championship logistics. John, can you move the slide? Um, this year, our event will take place on Tuesday, March 31st and April 1st. Um, like I said, make note of the change in the days of the week, which historically have been on Monday, Tuesday. Our event is going to run concurrently with the academics and speech event, as well as robotics this year. So robotics is taking over the Chisholm Hall on Monday, and then the art, um, this art crew will get it on Tuesday and Wednesday. The actual schedule is still being finalized, um, but you can see an overview here. Tuesday, all the artwork will begin to be judged. The 10 advancing senior portfolios will have their final judging and a gallery for viewing. The on-site still life and seek and sketch will be both, well, on-site still life will be the first day, and then um, seek and sketch will start on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then uh, Wednesday will finish up with the seek and sketch drawing and the on-site photography. Judging will finish up on Wednesday and we'll give awards um, as you pick up your artwork and your packets. Uh, Baylor University is still planning on doing student workshops again this year, but I don't have their schedule yet. And as soon as I have it, I will add it to our schedule and let you know of information with that. The official schedule and dates and deadlines are, um, well, the official dates and deadlines are posted on the website, and we will get that official schedule posted on the website in um, the next day or so. All right, so what happens when you get to the meet? Um, the main thing that we need you to do is read the schedule and make sure you understand what is all happening. You need to arrive on time. Some event load-in time may happen, um, some events may happen before your actual load-in time, so be sure to check the schedule on where your students need to be and when. Senior portfolios are one of the first things that load in, and so your um, load-in time might be later. So make sure you become prepared. All your artwork needs to be complete with documentation attached with the correct mounts and the mats. Um, we, we have a coach's checklist. You can go down that checklist and make sure that you've completed everything on it. And then we will also have notebook instructions for completing the notebook. Um, so make sure that you're prepared with those things. Uh, let's review some things. All right, so you're gonna go to the website, tabs.biz. You're going to contact us if needed at info at tax.biz. You're going to complete compliance requirements in rank one with your faculty and student uh, profiles eligibility. And then remember, this is where we communicate with you. So we definitely need you in rank one right away so that you are getting the push notifications that we are sending out. You need to make sure you are learning the rules, specifically the general rules combined with the category specific rules. Don't forget those general rules sections. Prepare yourself, know the dates and deadlines. We have several dates and deadlines coming up. Um, make sure you have documentation attached to your artwork. Uh, follow up with the notebook instructions and the checklist. And make sure your students are prepared. Make sure they understand what the requirements are for their category and that they have the documentation to make their artwork eligible. 
And then with your short films and senior portfolios, it's a great idea to share the access for those online entries. We will use TAPS again for registering entries, and I will have more information on specifics on how to do that for those of you who have new to TAPS. Um, but we, like I said, we do have some deadlines approaching, um, so make sure that your senior portfolios and short films are ready to go. A fun fact, um, two years ago in 2018, we had 2,373 art entries. Uh, last year, it went up to 2,709 art entries, and this year I'm hoping for 3,000. So go max out all your category limits, and we will hit that mark. Okay, mark your calendars. We have a June convention again this year. The last couple of years, we've offered workshops for our teachers, and it has gone really well. Um, Waco Convention Center, June 10th and 11th. We'll have workshops and sessions for you, for you art teachers. Last year, I think we had eight art-specific uh, sessions. John did some on photography that were well attended. Um, as soon as these topics are, session topics are available, we will upload them on our convention website. If you're interested in leading a workshop for 2020, let me know via info at taps.biz. Or if there's something specific you'd like to see as a workshop, um, let me know that information as well, and I'll try to find someone to host that. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, um, you can put them on uh, this the uh, go to webinar right now, and we can answer some that we have now. Um, if you come up with a question later, you can email them to info at taps.biz, or you can call the office. All right, we'll take questions. I think we've got a few questions here on the senior portfolio, Venus. So let's start there. Okay. During the oral critiques, who can participate in addition to the student? Can the teacher participate as well, or is it just between the student and the, the judge performing the oral critique, I think is the question. Uh, we don't regulate that. Um, we have had teachers in there with the students in the past. Um, I think it's mostly what's comfortable for the student. Um, as well as what's comfortable for the judge. Another question there was, what other changes were made to senior portfolio? We talked about public domain. Were there any other changes for senior portfolio? And I think in the past we allowed PowerPoint submission. So kind of talk a little bit more about what you think about senior portfolio, sure. the submission and any changes. We do have a senior portfolio um, slideshow that we will upload later um, in the next day. Um, but uh, one thing is you can still do the PowerPoint. Um, however, I've, the, the last couple of years, usually all the senior portfolios get viewed by the committee before they get sent to the judges just to make sure they're complete. And we've had issues in the past where one might only have five works, so we have to send it back. Um, and there might be issues where something might be missing and we have to send it back to the teacher who then sends it back to the student and sometimes if it's a PowerPoint, um, things it, it can't happen as quickly as if it was a shared document. Um, and so we found that in the last year or so that if the teacher and the student had a shared Google Slides document, they were able to uh, quickly update it and TAPS, we were updated immediately because when as soon as they updated it, we had we had that update and we, I didn't have to wait on someone emailing someone else and then waiting on it to email. And sometimes it took three days before we got what we needed. Um, and the, the timing for the judges is very valuable. And so we like to get them those updates as soon as possible. Um, so you still can do the PowerPoint. It's just recommended that if you have a slides, it might make it easier um, to share that access. Without needing the artwork information form, of course, if you've already started preparing it and you have an artwork information form in there, we're not going to take off for having something extra. What we do want to make sure is that you have um, the required documentation in there, and that's the main thing. Um, so the artwork information form is not required. However, the process shots is still required. We're just taking out that one sheet that doesn't need to be in there. Um, so we on that process shot in the notebook it will ask you know it will ask if um if you want to include process information so you could 
they can put a statement there saying this is a student taken photo and they attach that student taken photo on that uh, documentation page. Um, but the actual art information form does not have to be uploaded for each of those pieces. All right, as we move forward, there's questions about the load-in schedule. So as a reminder, we'll be uploading all information on the art page at taps.biz. So taps.biz, click on Fine Arts, click on Art. The buttons will become live. The championship links will become live tomorrow by the end of the day. You will have the load-in procedures uh, and, and times at that point. Again, on the uh, photo contest, the on-site photo, any student, whether it be art or academics, any student that's eligible to compete, uh, can submit and any faculty member that's there can also compete in the on-site photo this year. We're looking forward to seeing how many we have there and, and the, what we can use as well. Uh, one question, there are a couple of questions that have come up, Vina, on I think it's going to be back on uh, procedurally. Can student artwork be used, uh, can student artwork use a photo reference taken by their instructor? In other words, I think is does the art, the picture have to come directly from the student or can the instructor's work also be used? Um, th this was a rule that was changed in 2018 that all artwork has to be conceptually um, produced by the student entirely. So developed, created, and the concept has to come from the, t uh, from the student. And so the judges are not, uh, some of the things that we've heard over the last couple of years is that the students are making a great representation of someone else's captured beauty and what they're wanting is the students to capture the beauty and then create their artwork from that and so that was a rule that was changed in 2018 that all work must be entirely conceptualized including the source in which the artwork is coming from so teacher taking photos are not allowed but student taking photos are now, one thing that we haven't really addressed is without having that artwork information form, that is eliminating the um, model release. And so we will not be asking for model releases or anything like that. Um, so one thing that has been kind of taken out the last couple of uh, few years are the use of people in drawings and um, photos. Um, we do ask that you make sure you have permission from the person you're taking a photo from, but we are not requiring that signature anymore without without the use of that photo uh, piece of paper. Additionally, kind of go back over the schedule. Robotics will be in the Chisholm Hall on Monday, and that will be an all-day affair. So we will not begin art load in into Chisholm Hall until Tuesday. So. In the past, you may have come down on Sunday night and then loaded in on Monday, and the competition for art was Monday and Tuesday. As a reminder, this year's art contest is going to be mainly a Tuesday-Wednesday affair. Uh, and entry info and then other info will be posted on the TAPS website. Uh, go to Fine Arts. Go to the art page. That right-hand side blog, every time we send an RC uh, rank one push, uh, it will reference you back to go to that page to look at that post. So uh, make sure you bookmark the TAPS art website. Look over there on the right-hand side for updates that we are sending out to you. We will not use MailChimp, so don't be looking for email. It will be rank one. If you're not in rank one, I think we talked about it earlier, please make sure you get yourself and any other sponsors that are art-based in there as soon as possible so that we will be able to uh, go forward. Uh, we have a frequently asked question. So these questions that have been asked today, uh, again, will be pushed forward um, to the frequently asked questions. If you have more direct questions, uh, please email us at info, info at taps.biz. That way we're not going to get into basically the nitty gritty part of each contest. So if you have more direct questions that have been answered so far today, please email us at info at taps.biz. I also encourage you to go to the academic page or the speech page. That's where the uh, academic and speech conflict schedule will be presented. So if you have kids that are cross-centered in academic speech and or art, uh, if your art kids are there, please make sure that you look at those conflict schedules as you're signing them up for the on-site events, etc. And to kind of clarify one last point here, no model releases will be required this year. Vina, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Otherwise, it is up to you to finish this off. I did have one more uh, clarification um, with the use of um, public domain 
and uh, purchased images, those are also not allowed. J just the same as the work being conceptualized by the student. Um, you, they can't take an image from the internet. They can't take some, they can't even purchase an image from the internet to make something of it. So um, no public domain and no purchased rights where they, even if they purchase the rights to use something, they may not use it. Everything has to be conceptualized by the student. All right, if we don't have any other questions, then uh, we can wrap it up. Remember, info at caps.biz if you have questions, and we'll get back to you. Thanks for joining us, and thank you, John, for a great uh, idea for on-site photography. I know that the teachers have been wanting to bring that back for a while. Okay, I think we have one more question, and then we'll wrap up. Um, can students drop people for seek and sketch? And yes. Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is, and yes, and then no model releases at all. No model releases at all. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, well, we're running out of time. Um, if you have any more questions or direct questions that weren't answered today, please, please, please send us an email at info at taps.biz. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, also, art teachers, uh, if your programs or teams or anything have, um, have social media accounts, uh, especially Twitter, um, I would recommend, uh, beg please, that you find us on, on to find our art account, Taps Art. Uh, we're putting everything related to our, our, our fine art programs and competitions and the convention and everything up there. Um, <clears throat> and we'd like to see what your uh, art programs get up to and retweet those and share those with the rest of our community. Um, so Taps Art, if you can find us there. We also try to put resources for other contests and competitions um, that are outside of Taps but might be interesting to you. Uh, well, anyway, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. And um, this recording will be uh, emailed to you uh, by by uh, GoToWebinar when it's ready, and it's going to be posted to our YouTube uh, page by the end of the day. Um, thank you so much, and have a good uh, enjoy the rest of your day.